Princess of Wales is playing the long game, according to the author of a book about the royal family, claiming Kate pushed for that infamous phrase that recollections may vary following Harry and Meghan's explosive Oprah interview. Yeah, for more on this, we're joined by author and Times journalist Valentine Lowe. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for Good coming morning. in. The book is Courtiers, yeah. and it's been out, obviously, but you have revised it and updated it with this new chapter, haven't you? Yes, because a lot has happened since I wrote the book. Hasn't it just? Um, so, tell us about the allegation was made in the Oprah interview about... Members of the royal, unnamed members of the royal family asking about how Archie might look when he was born, the colour of his skin. Oprah, of course, <gasps> couldn't believe it was said. Um, and then the royal family were asked about it and said, hmm, recollections may vary. We now know where that phrase came from and how important it was. Yeah, so the royal family had a big debate after the Oprah inf interview came out about how to respond to that. And they took their time. One of the reasons they took their time because it hadn't been broadcast in Britain. And the Queen wasn't going to allow any statement to be made until she had watched the programme. So we had, we had to wait until Monday night when, of course, it was broadcast on ITV. So, she, not... watched, so she watched it live when it went out? She than watched it live coffee. when it went out rather than overnight the previous night when it was broadcast in the United States. States. How come they didn't get, an, as Ben said, a copy from the States? Answer. Yeah, but that, the Queen's not going to stay up till five in the morning or whatever it was while watching a programme. She was going to watch it in her own good time so she with the rest of the British population. Wow. OK. And they, they watched that and then scrambled to come up with a yeah, response. So they were, so they were, you know, the, her staff, the, the, the royal staff, were, who'd obviously watched it when it came out, were all working for a lot for hours for the whole of Monday about how to respond. And they had a draft statement, but it was a bit bland. It was a bit trying to make peace with Harry and Meghan. What did it say? Well, I, I don't know exactly what it said, but it definitely included a reference to Harry and Meghan being much-loved members of the royal family. But it didn't really challenge what they said. And it was William and Kate who said to their, their staff, listen, you've got to toughen this up. You've got, to, you've got to lay down a marker that we don't actually accept the truth of this. So they went away. And that was when William's private secretary, his chief of staff as well, who'd only just joined. I think he'd been in the job for 17 days at that point, so he was the new boy. He came up with the phrase, some recollections may vary. Mm. Uh, but then it was Kate who, who basically played blind, absolutely insisted uh, that it stayed in, because there were some people in some of the other royal households who were a bit worried about it. They, they thought it was too strong. They thought it was too strong. They thought it would antagonise Harry and Meghan and just just create more transatlantic war, you know, which they didn't want. They wanted peace. Uh, but, you know, Kate said, you know, we've got to play the long game. This is the long-time reputation of the royal family at stake. We've got to say that we don't accept the truth of everything they said. Valentine, the, it, it caused a massive ruckus, that interview. I mean, we, you know, it caused a massive ruckus on this programme when that <laughs> interview was dissected and those yeah. allegations of racism were yeah. made. Yeah. What is fascinating about the aftermath is that when Prince Harry did his promotional interview for Spare with Tom Bradby, he, his recollection varied of what they'd actually said. Just to remind viewers, this is what Prince Harry said to Tom Bradby. In the Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even... No, we didn't. Well, of... The British press said that. Right. I... Did, did Meghan ever mention... They're, they're racist. She said there were troubling comments about yeah, Archie's skin colour. There was concern color. about his skin colour. Right. Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. I mean, uh, you know, it's like rewriting what happened originally. In fact, a lot... Do you know what? On this programme, somebody who campaigns on that issue f said that they felt let down by the fact that they no longer said that that was racism. Yeah, and, and Harry, let's remind ourselves, had two years to put the record straight uh, and he'd stayed silent. He'd, you know, when, when, you know, the evil British press were, were saying they were accusing the royal family of racism, he had two years to put that straight. He never did. So he's definitely putting... And, and you look how Meghan delivered, delivered that message from Oprah. She was definitely wanting to put uh, a, a racism message across. And you look at Oprah's, you know, reaction when she went... <gasps> Like that, the utter, utter yeah. shock that yeah. she was expressing, which I was quite surprised by because, I, frankly, I would have thought that Oprah had heard that already. Um, the idea that she was hearing it for the first time in the interview mm. was um, 
Val uh, Valentine, what's the what's the sort of the feeling towards the Prince and Princess of Wales now? It sounds like there's particularly if it was Kate that said no, we need to keep this in. It's it's, it's just what we need it to say. Uh, it's, amongst the courtiers, who clearly you have contacts with, and they're willing to tell you what's going on mm. behind closed doors, yeah. which I still find extraordinary. <laughs> uh, what's their feeling towards the Prince and Princesses of, of Wales? Are they are they the figureheads that they think are going to be able to force a resurgence in the sort of popularity of the crown? Yeah, I, I think the, the, definitely that's where the, the future lies, because if you look at the, the, yeah, the, the popularity of the polls, you know, Charles is doing quite well, you know, and particularly immediately after the death of the mm. Queen, his, he, he, he did very well there, and his, the ratings reflected that. But, you know, the real popularity is with the next generation. And how likely is it that Prince William and Prince Harry can be ever become the brothers, loving brothers that they were? Uh, I think even if they make peace, which at the moment is not looking very likely, they'll still never become... It'll still be not how it was. I don't think the relationship will ever return to the kind of the innocent days uh, before they fell out. And what do you think Prince Harry and Meghan are going to do next in America? Is there going to be a book written by Meghan about her experience in the royal family? We know that they, you know, the lost Spotify Netflix mm -hmm. deals. What, what is the thinking within the royal family about what might face them next? I, th I think Harry and Meghan do want to move on, and I've spoken to their people who, who basically, in terms of, you know, accusations against the royal family, they say, Harry and Meghan, they say, we're done. You know, right. we, we've done that. OK. Uh, so no more revelations, no more... I don't think Bombshells, so. no more yeah, accusations. I mean, you know, it's not that there won't, won't be any shots, because there, there may be shots in Harry's various court cases, Harry's many court cases, you know, when he will say things about them. But I don't think there'll be a concerted thing, like a book or a programme right. or, or a kind of big interview. Mm. I think they've learned that, you know, Meghan's not stupid. I think she knows you, you, you've got to do something positive now. You can't carry on harking on that same negative message. Valentine, it's fascinating talking to you. We know you're very well connected, very plugged in, and uh, the new revelations in courtiers are fascinating. Thanks so much for joining us thank this morning. You, thank you for having me.